You do. It's Ace from Fit to Play Games. I just recently acquired two new things this week, and that's what we're going to talk about, and that's that will be the topic of our discussion today. All right. So stay tuned. Grab a coffee. Have a seat, and relax. All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel, and like I said. I picked up two new things this week and I just wanted to talk to you guys about it. So coming at number two, here it is. Alright, coming hot at number two, Lunar Silver Star Story. Uh, this was one of the games that I played as an alternative after I played the Final Fantasy franchise. Um, the storyline revolves around Alex. Uh, Typical kid uh, in every household, somebody wants to be an adventurer and he hears about legendary feats by Dragon Master Dine and he just wants to be just like him. And basically he comes to of age and ventures out to um, his very first adventure which is the Dragon Cave and he ventures out there with his three other friends, Ramus. Null and Luna. Uh, what caught me the most in this game, what got me hooked, was basically the game did not just revolve around a storyline in-game, but it also had cinematics that are anime-based. Now the animated cutscene definitely helped me understand as I move further into the game, helped me with the game mechanics, and kind of made me think of what the outcome would be and how the story is going to progress in my head. That was one of those selling points for me that um, something different that I have experienced to a game. Because most of the games I played back in the day, like I said, I played Final Fantasy during this era. And Final Fantasy was already employing CG-based cutscenes, which kind of caught the eye of the public just because it was something different. But I kind of got stuck into my ways and I gave this game a chance and now that I picked it up, I just can't wait to play this game again. And I just felt like it was overshadowed as well by the bigger companies just because, you know, Final Fantasy was on a rise. For sure, Final Fantasy was on a rise during this era and these kind of games that was handled by working designs it was very good games, it's just they were being overshadowed by the bigger company. And of course, when you're being overshadowed, it's, it's just really hard for your game to get picked up by the public more easily. Just because the access to it is not well known. Um, there was, I believe that there was a, such a small following of this game during this time. And like I said, you know, I felt like it would have been more, it could have been a bigger franchise could have been something that rivaled that of Final Fantasy series. But again, like I said, this game was one of the most excellent games I've ever played. It was the story of this game was excellent. Now, if you were to ask me what I think about Lunar Silver Star Story, it's still a very good game. It's still something that you role playing gamers out there should still pick up. It's a uh, easy game to play. The game mechanics are super easy to understand and the storyline is fantastic. And what else could you ask for? It did come with its own strategy guide, two CDs for the entire full game and one CD for the production crew and explains to you how they created the game and how they came up with the storylines for the game. And it also came with a musical CD so you can reminisce all those um, blissful moments as you listen to the music and the musical of the entire game. Alright, so for number one, I know you guys have been waiting ever since I started number two. So without further ado, here's number one. Alright, so you guys have guessed it. For all you guys who guessed that Lunar 2 Eternal Blue was coming up next, you guys got it right and what can I say if there was one there was always a part two and I can't deny it I could not deny or hide the excitement that I've had when I first heard that Lunar Lunar 
was coming out with a part two, which was Luna to Eternal Blue. And everything was basically based off of the very first Lunar, which is Silver Star story. But this storyline picks up a thousand years later after Alex, who was the main character that saved the world from Lunar Silver Star story, saved the world and he basically became a Dragon Master himself. So basically, this is where Hero's story begins. And he's trying to prove that everything that happened in the world a thousand years before was true. And that Dragon Master Alex, who was the protagonist from the previous Lunar, in fact saved the world from evil. And as he does this, he's digging around just like an archaeologist trying to find proofs of all of this occurring. And that kind of made the right direction for me to go with the new Lunar story. And that definitely won me over the new storyline, the new characters, the new heroes, and some returning characters from the first Lunar are here. And yeah, if you guys ever have the chance to pick up this game, please go. I'm, you know, I'm trying to let you guys know that it's a game that you should be able to keep and enjoy for years to come. And it's something that is definitely icy as a treasure. So Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, what do I think about the game? I think it's a very fantastic game. It's got a good storyline. The commands and controls are so good. And also the animated cutscenes are there to help you understand the game as you progress within the game. I think it definitely is a lot better than the first one, even though I consider the first one to be a very good game as well. The only reason I like Lunar 2 a lot more than I like Lunar, it's because it uses Lunar, the very first one, which is Silver Star Story, as its history. So it uses Alex now as its history. If you guys remember the from the very first game, if any, if for you guys who've already played the very first Silver Star Story, Alex's storyline, he actually looked up to uh, Dragon Master Dine, who was the most powerful of all four uh, generals that defeated the evil before him. So now, hero story, which is in Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, he's looking up to uh, Dragon Master Alex, who's defeated the evil a thousand years later, when it's hero's time, basically. So, um, when it comes to the price of these games, these games are not cheap. Um, you probably saw when I was showcasing, one of the games had this old electronic boutique price in it. I did not pay for that. Um, it's going to be a little bit more expensive when, than what they used to be just because this games, these games are a little bit more on the rarer side. But um, do I think it, it, it's worth paying for that much? I think yes. Just because I already have them now, and I will definitely add them to my collection, and I would never let them go. It's one of those games that you would want to hold on to and be proud that you actually have it. Just because um, it's one of those games that are so good, but never really gotten that much of publication because it was overshadowed by bigger companies that have already establish themselves to be you know the top dogs when it comes to role-playing games but i still think this would have been the lunar series would have been a good contender against those bigger um companies that created that game for example final fantasy franchise the these definitely would have been a um second um for me since i'm also a big fan of the final fantasy series so um yeah, um, I hope you guys liked the video. I thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, let me know if you guys want to watch, if you guys want me to cover a certain type of content. I was finally able to show you guys a little bit of gameplay for these games. So hopefully that keeps on going for the next content that I make. And if you guys have not yet liked nor subscribed to me, um, please go ahead and do that. That would definitely help me uh, learn more towards YouTube and making more content so you guys can enjoy all my content and you know um, that kind of helps me get a little bit better anyway this is Ace again from fit to play games thank you so much